Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Of course, you've seen it a sea of red all over the place. We are watching stocks going down further and further. What's really going on and what will come of all of this? The first thing we'll look at the stock market specifically, the second will be inflation rising, and the third is the fact that the central banks seem to be ignoring reality. I'm going to show you why this is really key for you. Let's begin right here by taking a look at stocks falling on Friday to close out a tumultuous week, Dow dropping for the sixth straight week. You got to understand this is quite significant. You look at the actual numbers, you see it for yourself. These are the four broad US indexes and you watch how week after week, day after day, they have been doing quite poorly. I mean, even when we saw that huge rise, thinking this was the bottom, a whole bunch of people started buying in. We saw Kathy Wood's arc seeing one of the biggest inflows of cash. And what happened? The very next day, it turned red. And we watched that again. Amazon stock, one of those that has been, you know, this is a fantastic stock, it's great, and so on. But after that initial rise in 2020 came up and chopped along for quite some time, right now it is down 40% from its peak. There are many more examples of that. You know, I can show you some small like Peloton and so on that are down at record lows, but these are smaller companies. When we talk about a company like Amazon, we are talking about one of the biggest companies in the world. Now, a company like Apple, on the other hand, has fared much better. We are nowhere near the bottom, top economist says, as global markets crater. Now is the time for reappreciation of the economic fundamentals around the world in terms of growth. Another quote here is, it's hard for markets to be totally optimistic when inflation is going up. Growth is going down, and interest rates are rising fast across the globe. These are some very fundamental aspects. I do agree with that. Okay, so this makes me think that when you see bear, bearishness and pessimism basically spread all around, that starts to make me think that, hey, maybe it's time to look the other direction. But nobody really knows. Brutal stock sell-off is a multitude of bear cases coming true. Losses are spreading from risky stocks to steady earners. We are likely closer to a bottom. So there's a lot in here, but I just want to show you something. One after another, equity sell-off spread from risky corners of the market to quality stocks. This is cool because it shows us these different time frames from essentially the beginning of 2020 up until the present, okay? The, the top one is basket of stay-at-home stocks. Well, they saw their peak earlier, much earlier, in fact. Okay, so let's say after about a year or less, they peaked out, and then they've been heading lower ever since. Expensive software shares peaked out what looks like end of 2021, and just after that, the FANG stocks peaked out as well. So people think that this just rises and rises and rises over time. And for a lot of individuals, buying into the general indexes is what they've been doing. Because they say, hey, I can just throw money in their dollar cost average and I don't need to look at it. But I mean, when you have some of your wealth, when you have you know, so much invested, my personal opinion is that you should be on guard, not just throwing your money in and saying, I'm going to hope that everything turns out okay. To me, that's not much of a strategy but that's a whole different story. Now, you came this far into the episode. I've got something, what I wanted to really break down. Spend one minute looking at this. Less than a minute, 30 seconds. And if you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up. Stocks are always going to react too late to information that comes out. And they're always going to be too early on a speculative fashion, you know, speculative manner when you see what they do time and time and time again. This is always the way it works. The next thing, inflation is never stopped by moderate rate hikes or minimal rate hikes. If they're going to go by 25 basis points and inflation is way up here, it's not going to have an effect. Absolutely. The spread in between inflation and interest rates is too wide. Think about this for a second. 
Well, you have inflation rising higher and higher. These interest rates, they can't keep up. So look at some countries, which we'll talk about more in a second, like Turkey, or just, I don't know, any other example where we have very high inflation rates. What do they do to interest? Do they, every month, they, they sit down and they meet and they increase by 25 basis points or 50 basis points? No, they jack it up. Why? Because they're trying to get inflation down. Isn't that a novel idea? Wow. Okay, slow economy means a recession is coming most likely. That's just a matter of fact. Now, if things turn around, okay, that's not the case anymore. But the current trajectory, that's where we are heading. And so I ask you this question. If you knew that there was a recession coming in 6, 12, 18 months, whatever the number is, what would you do? What would you do to prepare? Ask yourself, like literally ask yourself that question. I ask myself questions every single day. It's not a, you know, somebody on my shoulder here uh, or, uh, you know, another voice in my head. Ask yourself the question, what would I do to prepare? And then start answering it. Start doing the research based on that. Things that I've covered all along, as well as in my uh, How To and Solutions playlist here on the channel, How To and Solutions. Check out that playlist and many others. These, oh, here we go. These are the measurements of volatility. You can look at the VIX index and the MOVE index and all these different things. But guess what? Since the beginning of 2022, they are all up, all of them. And that's not a surprise to anyone. Now, let's talk about food real quick i want to show you what's happening with inflation just quick updates soaring fertilizer prices put global food security at risk world fertilizer price index has accelerated beyond things that we have seen before that's not a surprise to those who have been on this channel Officials in Indonesia, the world's top edible oil ship, recently restricted sales of palm oil abroad. That adds to a rash of crop protectionism since the war began, with countries like Serbia and Kazakhstan imposing quotas on grain shipments. India is also considering limited wheat, limiting their wheat exports. Okay, Such moves might benefit consumers in the countries that they're in, but of course that hurts the rest of the world if they can't get it. Surging food prices, piling pressure on governments spanning Sri Lanka to, to Peru, and of course Turkey, inflation rate at a two-decade high. All of these things, factors we have talked about before, but I'm just reminding you, I'm just showing you what's been happening. Let's turn the page, okay? You don't have to see yet another uh, transition, a move across the desk, but you can look at this. The Federal Reserve. All these different members. I'm going to show you many examples. Fed Bank uh, of Richmond President Thomas Barkin said that he would not take anything off the table in the central bank's fight to curb inflation, including raising interest rates by 75 basis points. Look at this. I have them in here. Somewhere in here. I think that was the one. There are m many more... Uh, I'll pull that up in a second. Look at this. Powell's inflation strategy takes fire from X. This is the one. X top Fed officials. Chair takes the most heat from X colleagues since the 1970s. Okay. Many examples. Let's move through real quick. Richard Clarida, Powell's uh, vice chair previously said this week, interest rates will have to go to levels that he, Jerome Powell, hasn't acknowledged okay meaning he's gonna have to go much higher randall quarles was harder hitting saying the team ought to have started battling inflation back in september and the fed now faces a likely recession to bring prices under control this is exactly what i talk about and randall quarles talking about the same thing okay alan blinder he was a vice chair previously and he said that uh, they are, and William Dudley, by the way, Bill Dudley, said that they are seeing a recession. They're seeing this. They're saying this. I'm saying this. This is the way it is. Now they're talking about more. So many different people, okay? All of them are saying the same thing. But then you have Neil Kashgari. Neil, I really wanted to be the chair of the Fed. Kashgari, policy has tightened a lot. Isn't it enough? 
Well, according to Neil Kashgari, he says that neutral is 2%. Now, I think that they'll probably get to around 2%, personally. And then they'll realize, uh oh, we went way too far. And then they start bringing that back. Okay. But who knows? I, re I really don't know. It's already at this point too tight. Clearly, markets don't like it. The businesses are starting to say, okay, we're going to lay off those people, lay off those people. You see that happening, right? You see that happening with different companies. You know, you get that in the, the Robin Hoods and the other type of companies first, but then it starts to make its way through. Uh, lower in this article further down, they're saying, hey, things have really tightened. And one of the things that he said was, um, yeah, this is the mortgage rates being basically, hey, conditions are tightening. And that is true. I'm not disagreeing with that, that it ha it's tighter, but not historically. Okay, we need to observe the incoming data over the next several months to determine if fulfilling current guidance is enough to bring inflation back down or if we will need to do a lot more. I am confident that we will do what we need to do to return to our inflation target 2%. Ah, uh, that good old 2%. The odd, like why 2%? Why, why 2%? Why not 1.8%? Why not 2.5%? Why not 0%? It's just a good round number, I guess. In the Eurozone and in the US, they are nowhere near realizing that actually there will be some form of contraction of economic activity. And this is absolutely true. They refuse to acknowledge this. This is Turkey just showing you different measurements of inflation. All of them have risen considerably. Like I said, the central bank, if they want to bring it down, they increase their interest rates considerably. Then we have China. China is conducting stress tests to see how its economy will cope and respond to uh, and respond if the U.S. imposed Russia-style sanctions on it. Russia's narrative that sanctions on it are a prelude to Western economic warfare against China is gaining traction in Beijing. This is massive. It's not just about Taiwan, of course. Many different reasons for this. So keep your eyes peeled. China wary of Russia-type sanctions, but Beijing's financial nuclear bombs are all are a powerful deterrent. So this is just basically connecting in with that information. Wow. Okay. Economy crippling sanctions imposed by the West on Russia are a textbook, textbook warning for China if it helps its neighbor or follows through with the Taiwan threats. By the way, this is from the South China Morning Post. Okay. But China is so involved in global trade that severing ties seems very unlikely. And some Western partners may not follow U.S.-led moves to punish Beijing. According to Ray Dalio, who has some deep ties with China, he has said that if China goes for Taiwan, that the U.S. will not engage in a hot war. And they will not do so because it's not worth it. It's not worth the obvious consequences for both sides. It just won't, nobody's going to win in the end. That's the expectation. But of course, nobody knows. Nobody really knows. Maybe a proxy situation. But anyway, I think it's important that everybody keep their eyes peeled on what's happening with China as it relates to Taiwan, but of course, just as all of these things, I mean, we had the tariff war, we had all, all of the different events ever since, and this is, of course, extremely concerning. China is going for it. They don't care what they've got to do. They don't care who hates them and who doesn't like them and who doesn't want to deal with them and the bad publicity and anything else. They, are, they know what they want and they are going for it. And of course, that is... Um, possibly a concern for the current hegemony that is in place today. And of course, people should be aware and people should be making preparations that they can do. You can't do everything. You can't change the world. But what you can do is make a difference for yourself and your family. I hope you appreciate that. If you do, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, yeah, you got to join the 282,000 people on here. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.